In this lesson, you'll learn how intents are used to start components. As shown in this page from the developer's website, an intent is an object which is used in this case as an abstract description of an operation to be performed. It can be used with start activity to launch an activity, broadcast intent to fire up any interested broadcast receivers, and start service or bind service to communicate with a background service. In this lesson, we'll look at an app example that uses an explicit intent and an implicit intent. The explicit intent will start a specific activity within our app, and the implicit intent will start a browser app that fits the filter of our intent information. If there were no browsers loaded on our device, there would be no response to the intent. And this is why they're called intents and not something more certain like starters. There's an intent that something should happen, but it might not if no components meet the filtering criteria. There are two primary pieces of information used for an intent, action and data. The action indicates the general action to be performed, such as view, edit, or main. Data provides the information to operate on, such as a person record in the contacts database and the data is expressed as a URI. A URI is a uniform resource identifier composed of a scheme name followed by a colon and then the scheme part. An example is http colon slash slash www.google.com to specify a web address. A few other examples of action and data pairs are shown in this graphic, such as an action view with a contact information URI is shown here. And we'll see how this information is used in an example later in this lesson. There's other information that can be included in an intent as shown in this graphic. Category, type, component, and extras. And this information is shown here on this graphic is taken from the developer's website at the link shown here. We'll explore these intent information types as needed in future lessons. For now, we'll focus on the basics. To demonstrate intents, we're going to create a new project called Intents Example from our existing project, Add Activity Example. Now, you should already know how to do this from our lesson on creating a new project from existing code. The Intents Example project is also included in the working file sample workspace. So you can either use the pre-made project or make one for yourself as practice. If you create it in the working file samples workspace, just use a different name such as Intense Example 2. If you're going to create one for yourself, please pause the lesson now and do that. When you're done, return here. Welcome back. You should now have a project like the one shown here on the right. If you used the existing project from the Working Files workspace samples, it will already have some new code added to demonstrate intents. In the main activity, there's code as shown here in this green box. If you're using your own new project, add the code as shown here. What this code will do is start the browser activity within the project. Let's take a very close look at these two statements. The first statement creates a new intent object. On the left of the equal sign is a declaration for our new intent object we're calling browser intent. On the right of the equal sign is the code that actually creates the new object. It uses the intent class with a method signature to create an intent for a specific component. And this signature has two parameters. The first is the context of the activity, which is designated as this, which is the context for the current activity. The second is the name of the component class that the intent will start. In this case, it's the browser activity that we added in a previous lesson. The second statement uses the start activity method of the activity class to use the browser intent we created to start the browser activity. Now let's look at the code added to the browser activity for our implicit intent to start a browser. If you use the existing project from the working files workspace samples, it will already have some new code added as shown here. In the browser activity, 
There's code as shown here in the green box. If you're using your own new project, add the code as shown. What this code will do is start the Google browser. The code is similar to the explicit intent we just examined. The first statement creates a new intent object. On the left of the equal sign is a declaration for our new intent object we're calling browser intent. On the right of the equal sign is a code that actually creates the new object. It uses the intent class with a method signature to create an intent with a given action and a specific type of URI. The signature has two parameters. The first is the action type, the second uses the parse method of the URI class to format a URI. The URI is specified here as a parameter to that method and is the web address for the Google browser. The second statement uses the start activity method of the activity class to use the browser intent we just created to start the Google browser. Let's review how intents were used in our example. First, the launcher started our main activity using an explicit intent. We didn't look at this in detail, but this is what goes on behind the scenes in the launcher activity. Our main activity then issued an explicit intent to start our browser activity. The browser activity then issued an implicit intent to start the Google browser. Now let's see the app in operation. We'll open the workspace with our intense example project. I have the emulator already started in a window side by side with Eclipse for convenience. We'll click on the intense example to highlight it and then start it in the emulator by clicking the debug button here. We see the browser appear in response to our implicit intent. And once started, we can use the browser like we would on a mobile device. For example, if we key in Android, and then click search, we get the browser search results. That's our lesson on intents, and we'll use intents many times in coming lessons, so please make sure you understand how they work before you move on.